Today we're going to be talking about sorting algorithms, particularly the bubble sort. There may become a time when you've got a data structure that you would like to sort, like an array, and this is an example of an algorithm that can do it for you. There are lots of other types of algorithms, but today we will look particularly at how the bubble sort works. We'll talk a little bit about the pseudocode and then apply it to a Delphi example. And then lastly, we'll just mention some modifications you can do to this algorithm. So, how does a bubble sort work? The idea behind a bubble sort is that it takes all the elements in the array and compares each one with the element right next to it. If they're in the wrong order, they'll swap them. If they are in the right order, then we leave them alone. And we do this again and again and again until the array is sorted. So, let's try that algorithm. We'll take elements 1 and 2, compare them. Are they in the right order? Yes, they are. So, we leave them alone. Let's move on to 2 and 3. These, however, are in the wrong order. So in this case, we will swap them. 3 and 4, right order. So we leave alone. 4 and 5, however, are not in the right order. So here we will do a swap. You'll notice as well in 5 and 6, we'll probably have to do a swap again. And then again, in 6 and 7, we'll have to do another swap. So there we go. We've done a one whole loop through our array, but you'll see it's still not sorted. But if you've noticed, the last element is in the correct position if it was sorted. That's the idea behind a bubble sort as well. It sorts from the last element to the first. So now we actually don't need to worry about sorting the last element. Now we can just focus on elements 1 to 6 to sort them. So let's do this again. Number 1 and number 2 in the wrong order. So we'll swap them. Number two, number three, they're okay. Three and four, they're not, so we will swap them. Four and five, they seem okay. Five and six, in the wrong order, so we will swap them. Notice here, here's where we stop, because we know that the last element is already sorted. So there we go. Now, you will probably notice that it's sorted now, but because we've made swaps, we're probably going to have to do it again just to make sure that it is correctly done. So we'll do it again. 1 and 2, no swap. 2 and 3, no swap. 3 and 4, no swap. And so on and so on. Till we get to the fifth element, because we know that elements 6 and 7 are sorted. And there we go. We've got a sorted array. So the pseudocode behind it. Basically, we're going to have some sort of flag that we use to tell us if we've made a swap. And we're going to keep going through all the elements in the array until there's a time when we go through it and we don't make any swaps. That's the idea behind this flagging variable. We set it to true, assuming that it is sorted. And the moment we find a problem with it, we will set it to false. So I repeat doing this until the flagging variable is true, until I can get through the entire array without making any swaps. Now, passes means how many times have I gone through the array? I don't actually need to use this iPasses variable, but you'll see here when we do a loop, we're going to loop through the array from 1 to the size of the array. That will work, but because I'm minusing iPasses, what that means is I'm taking the last element of the array, or the one that I've just sorted, and not including it when I go through the loop again. So it will work if you don't use iPasses, it just won't work as efficiently. When I get to each element in the array, I compare it with the next element in the array. If the, one, if the item is greater than the item that's next to it, then obviously we need to do a swap. So then we swap the two elements, but also remember to set the flagging variable to false. So the bubble sort in Delphi, there you can see the code. All I've done is I'm going to apply this to an example in Delphi where I've got an array called array numbers. So we're going to go to Delphi now, and here you can see my bubble sort. I've literally just copied this code, and that's what you can do. You can almost learn this code um, parrot fashion and know exactly that it'll work. Only thing you have to be aware of is whatever your array is called and how big your array is. In this case, my array and numbers is the name of my array, and it has n elements in the array. So here we go. I've just taken that code. I repeat until B no switches, which is my flag, and I repeat doing this until there are no swaps in my array. Here is the code for the swap. You'll notice I use a temp variable because I cannot 
just say array numbers i equals to the next one and vice versa because it won't work. We need to store it temporarily in a temp variable. Please take note that your temp variable will be of whatever type of element is in the array. So here we've got the algorithm. So we're going to run the code. Let's see what it looks like. Here I've got the array. I'm going to display it. And as you can see, it's exactly like we had in the example, and it's not sorted. I'm now going to click on this array button, which you'll notice is this button over here. It'll run my sort algorithm. It pops up with a message saying the array is sorted. That was just a little feature I added at the bottom here. And now I'm going to display the array again. Here you'll notice the array is sorted. Any modifications that you can do to the array, just obviously this sorted it in ascending order. If you want to sort it in descending order, the only thing you would need to change is that greater than sign to a less than sign. And that's how easy it is. If, for example, you've got an array of string variables, it will still work. The only difference is your array will need to be of, of type string and your temp variable will have to be of type string because that's where you store in an element of the array in. But other than that, there's no real changes. I hope you've learned something from this. And we look forward to hearing from you again.